Hello everyone and welcome back. We've had a few people ask for more of these be an endo resident for a day cases. So here you go. As you can see from this image, we got a fracture of number eight. A uh, little kid decided he wanted to run into a wall. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he's at that phase where there is no support of those lower incisors. And so as you can see, he chipped it pretty badly. When we originally took this phone call, this patient lives about four or five hours away. And one of the things you always want to do is find the tooth fragment. You can technically build it up in composite, but there's going to be nothing that is as good as the tooth fragment. The parents were a little hesitant to do it, but we said, please, please, please find the tooth fragment. And thankfully, they're able to bring it in. And as you'll see, we had a pretty good result here. So one of the first things you need to look at is whether or not the pulp tissue has been exposed. In this case, it's pretty clear from the pink that there was exposure. We got the phone call about 24 hours before we were able to see him. So it's only been a day of exposed tissue, which is really, really good. Ideally, if you can get them in the same day, that's great. Um, given his age, his behavior, and the distance he was traveling from, I decided to sedate him. So we saw him in the morning for the consultation, got the prescription for the Halcyon, and saw him later that afternoon. So from time of accidents to time of treatment was about 24 hours, give or take. Now, we know that bacteria can travel about a millimeter every 24 hours. Hey everybody, I was finishing doing the editing on this and didn't realize that I can't find that paper. I've asked like four different people who are board certified like me, and we all say for sure it goes one millimeter per day, but we cannot find that paper whatsoever. So if anyone who's studying for boards right now knows where to find that paper, please let me know. <laughs> but the one millimeter per day, that has been verified by multiple different people that we all learned this at some point. I'm just not sure where we got that from. So back to the case. And given that it was only a millimeter, I did a kind of modified spec pulpotomy, as you'll see here, by removing just about a millimeter of the tissue and then sealing it up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about it. As far as isolation, because there's so much space, I just used a regular number nine. Make sure the rubber dam goes far enough below those margins so you can easily get the tooth fragment back on top of there. Thankfully, because he had diastomas on either side, this was not a big problem whatsoever. Depending on how tight the tooth is, sometimes you'd want to use a different technique. As you can see, <laughs> this is with the Halcyon. He's still bouncing this much. Um, this is even with the image being stabilized. You can see how much movement there is. I tried to keep this as full length as possible. Uh, not Didn't really cut too, too much out here, so you get an idea of how long this will take. So using the um, high speed here, unfortunately, I, I would normally have water going, but it just doesn't want to work in this room. So um, very quick here. I didn't really have to remove too, too much. It's not going to really cause that much damage, thankfully. Uh, rinse that all off and take a look at that pulp tissue. So I've removed about the millimeter. That's all you really have to do as far as your spec pulpotomy. And I recommend doing about a millimeter per day from the accident. Uh, that's pretty much kind of what the literature shows. And so here we created a little bit more space and you want to scrub the area to make sure it's nice and clean. In this case, I use Triton actually because it contains both the bleach and the EDTA. Um, if you just have one, I would choose EDTA because it helps release more stem cells. Um, let that soak on there, rinse it off, make sure it's nice and dry, and most importantly, make sure it is not bleeding. As you can see, that looks great. We're going to use BC Putty here. I would recommend as long as you use a modern material that doesn't stain, that's the key. So you can use Biodentine, you can use Neo-MTA, um, but I would not recommend using traditional gray MTA, and certainly please, please, please do not use IRM, do not use calcium hydroxide here. That's going to cause terrible, terrible results eventually. I can show you <laughs> some of the fun cleanups I've had to do for when people did that. Um, as you can see, that little kid was just moving. It turns out he spit out most of the Halcyon. So fun fact, it doesn't work if uh, they don't get inside their system. So he was a little difficult to deal with from a behavior standpoint, but thankfully these cases go pretty darn quickly. The length of this video is about how long I spent on him. I think the total was 10 minutes um, and did, did have to get him numb, but he was a trooper for that. And then the rest of the time, it was pretty straightforward here. I used a dry cotton pellet here to remove any excess BC. Now it does take about 30 minutes for this to set to complete hardness, so I'm not going to be doing that here. The other thing, normally I would be covering this with a, like a GI. In his case though, I want this to fit perfectly. So what you do after drying everything off, this has been rehydrated in, um, it was actually brought to me in milk, so it was already rehydrated, which is great. Etch around the outside, this is the tooth fragment here, and then you're also going to etch the tooth itself. Now, 
While I'm doing this, my assistant is rinsing the etch off and starting to apply the bonding agent, air thinning like normal, and that's what we're doing here. I'm trying to do a selective etch technique and just get the enamel along the outside. That's where most of this strength is going to be coming from, so it is very important to do that here. Um, and that and you really don't want to disturb the BC if you can. That's, that's the key here. You want that to be nice and solid. So what we're going to do is now come in with our bonding agent. In this case, I just use the universal one step from Curare, the clear fill. This stuff works great. You're going to do a nice thick coating along all of it here. The assistant is doing this to the tooth fragment at the same time. You then air thin to make sure you don't have a very thick barrier. The thinner this is, actually the stronger it is. And then you're going to go ahead and place that fragment. Now, I have unfortunately large hands <laughs> and this is a little bit hard for me to grab. So I ended up trying to do it by hand, didn't really snap into place, so I ended up using the cotton forceps here to try to put it into place. Unfortunately, that didn't work either. But what you want to see is what will happen right at the end here. You'll see the tooth kind of snap into place perfectly, just like a puzzle piece. Thankfully, the rubber dam caught that, <laughs> which is good, so it didn't fall on the floor or anything like that. <clears throat> but as you can see, we're right on top of there, almost getting to the point. If anyone knows a better way to hold these for big old apes with giant hands like me, I'd appreciate it. But right about there, see where it snaps in place? I probably don't even have to hold it at this point because now the tooth has lined up so perfectly. You're gonna go ahead and cure for 20 seconds, both buccal lingual, and really that's about all you have to do. This is a technique that I learned at the IAE last year. Very, very cool technique where you just use bonding agent to reattach the tooth and they were showing 10 year recalls that looked fantastic. This is why it's so important to have them find the tooth fragment. You can see me testing there. I was moving to make sure it was nice and solid and the whole tooth was wiggly. So just that amount of bonding agent is enough to reattach this piece. Now, what I did notice is along the buckle where the fracture occurred, there was a small, small piece of enamel that had chipped off. And so I decided to go ahead and fill that in with just some flowable composite, more for aesthetics rather than strength, really. Um, so you can see right along that area where that indentation is. I'm going to come in here with just some A1 flowable you can see how much this kid's moving. <laughs> like I said, it was a fun one to uh, easy case, but half the time with all my pediatric patients, they're, they're just, it's all behavior stuff. Um, what I'm doing here is just filling that in along both fragments there to make sure that it looks nice, polish it off and just smooth it off here with an endo explorer. And that way it's not going to catch, you know, get stained or I'm not doing this for the strength of the restoration. It's just to make sure that as he grows older, I want this to last as long as possible, ideally, and, you know, start to have things like coffee or tea or anything like that. It's not going to get caught inside that area and, you know, leave an unsightly line. So go ahead and like here for the full amount here. And then once this is done, pretty much it's a polish and adjust the bite like crazy. Um, this is just one of those fine polishing burrs. You can get these. Everyone has these. They're, they're very useful. You can see how they're the line is present there, but thankfully, because I filled that little area with flowable, it's not going to collect stain quite as much. Um, and that's pretty much all you have to do. Flip around to the lingual, make sure that there's not any excess along there. And then when you take the rubber dam off, which I'll do in just a second, it's really about checking the bite here. So the reason I included this is because the next lecture to the endo residents is going to be on trauma. This is probably one of the most common traumas that you will see, whether or not you're an endodontist or a general dentist working out in the private practice. So I wanted to talk about this as an option. So just a reminder, make sure they find the fragment. Bring it with them and you can reattach these and get a really, really nice result. And once again, I did not cut out too much of this at all. So that was about the whole treatment time. Um, we're looking at, you know, maybe six, seven minutes. And with kids and pediatric patients, you want to be this quick because <laughs> as you can see, he didn't give me a lot of time. Now, when you're checking the bite here, number one, notice that he's got pretty much complete overlap. It's it's just an ortho nightmare. He will be starting braces soon. I encourage them to get in there as quickly as possible. One thing you can do, especially with kids, they're going to have those mammalons shaved off anyway. So get inside there, remove all of those so it's nice and flat. It's not going to affect the long-term aesthetics of this area anyway. But by removing that, you're taking the tooth out of the bite and giving it a much better chance of not having any issues. This is one thing where when you have these really terrible overbite overjet cases to 
take the tooth out of the function completely because you know they're going to go into ortho the orthodontist can fix it and we're talking tens of millimeters here but that makes a huge difference anyway that's what it looked like before we put the flowable on top of there that's what it looks like when it's all finished and polished up as his saliva goes inside there it should rehydrate and you shouldn't even be able to tell Here's what the x-ray looks like. So as you can see, not that deep of the BC putty. That's all you really need to do. You don't have to remove a ton of tooth structure here. And the nice part is this stuff doesn't stain. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. The presentation I will be giving is next week on the 31st. I think I'm planning for this to come out on Thursday on the 25th. So if you have any questions about trauma, please drop them below. I can I, I work on those presentations to the residents up to the very, very last minute. So if you have any questions about trauma, please put it in there. I will put that into the presentation and answer hopefully all of your questions. I'm planning on, since I only have an hour, we're probably gonna have to break this up into two because avulsions on their own is an hour lecture. So thank you all so much for watching. Drop a like and subscribe and I will talk to you all next time.